Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me this morning. Grab a good cup of coffee and go with me to Mount Carmel in the Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter number 18. We left Elijah standing there yesterday in front of the huge group of the prophets of Baal, 450 of them, 400 prophets of Asherah, outnumbered 850 to 1. Let's see what happens. In the meantime, some of you have noticed the warehouse coming up behind me as we're getting ready to move. And uh, so I'm asking, well, when is that going to be? Well, the moving date is actually now set for December the 6th. We've got Thanksgiving coming up ahead. We've got to finish packing this house and get ready while I'm going back and forth working in Columbus, North Carolina. It's just a strange time, <laughs> but we're working on it, my friends. And that means you may have a different background each and every day as we do wake up in the Word, sometimes from here, sometimes from a different place. In the meantime, we are in... 1 Kings chapter 18, we left Elijah standing there in front of the people who've gathered to watch this contest where he says, hey, if God is the Lord, then serve him. Well, if Baal is the real God, then serve him. How long are you going to waver between these two opinions? And the people didn't answer a word. They were just like, okay, show us something. I mean, look, we've been three years without rain. We're all just kind of suffering. Our animals are dying. Our crops are failing. What you got? What you got for us? <laughs> so the contest begins. And as it begins, I want you to notice how Elijah steps back and says, well, why don't you guys go first? We pick up in verse number 22, where Elijah says to the people, I'm the only remaining prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are some 450 men. Let two bulls be given to us. They're to choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, place it on the wood, but not light the fire. I will prepare the other bull and place it on the wood and not light the fire. Then you call on the name of your God. I'll call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers with fire, he is God. And all the people answered, that's fine. Now, that's the way the CSB puts it, at least. That's fine. They answered, basically, that's okay. That's fine with us. They're kind of like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I mean, really, you got an idea here? Let's see if one of these gods will prove himself to us, because right now we're a hurting people and we need some action. Well, what happens in the next verse is interesting because Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, since you are so numerous, choose for yourselves one bull, prepare it first. Then call on the name of your God, but don't light the fire. So they took the bull that was given to them, prepared it, and gave, gave all the things necessary to prepare this bull on the altar. And it says, then they called on the name of Baal. They started early in the morning, and it says, from morning until noon, saying, Baal, answer us. But there was no sound. No one answered. Nothing's happening here. <laughs> so are you going to admit that you've messed up? Well, of course not. Let's just ramp this worship service up a little bit, and maybe we can get God to pay attention to us, this God named Baal. So it says, now they danced around the altar that they made. Oh boy, let's really have some fun here. Maybe if we dance, you got some good moves. Let's see if we can't wake Baal up. Well, it, in verse 27, it says, at noon, Elijah mocked them. He said, shout loudly, for he's a god. I mean, maybe he's thinking it over. Maybe he's wandered away, or maybe he's on the road. Perhaps he's sleeping and we'll wake up. They shouted loudly. And they cut themselves with knives and spears according to their custom until blood gushed over them. And all afternoon they kept on raving until the offering of the evening sacrifice, but there was no sound, no one answered, and no one paid attention. Now, so far we've seen a little bit of nothing going on here. It's kind of like some of you folks that love to tailgate for your famous college football games. You show up early and everybody sets up the barbecue and everybody's having a good time. They're all just hanging out, waiting for something to happen. Eventually the ball game starts, but then in this ball game, nobody has scored. Nothing is happening. They're kind of running back and forth. They're hurting each other. They're hurting themselves, but no touchdowns. It's getting late in the day and boy, this has been a boring way to waste your Saturday afternoon. But in particular, what's happening here, this contest is leading up to a point 
of explosion. We'll not see that today. We'll see it tomorrow. But in the meantime, I want you to pick up on something in this passage that's very important. Remember, there is no God named Baal. If you're worshiping Baal, you really are giving your worship to Satan. Satan receives worship when the true and living God's worship is diverted to anything except him. That's Satan's objective. And in particular, what he's doing here is drawing worship away from the true and living God to himself by getting them to worship Baal. And one of the key ways you can know if your worship is fake, if it's not for real, is how you are trying to impress your God. And here's one of the things they were doing. It says they shouted loudly and cut themselves with knives and spears according to their custom until blood gushed out. In other words, this is something they had done before. It's something that they were taught to do to impress Baal. So a warning to the wise this morning. If your religion demands that you hurt yourself and you somehow have gotten into this idea that somehow hurting my own body whether that's through drugs, alcohol, cutting yourself, anything else, somehow is fulfilling and somehow leads to the pleasure of this God, then you are really worshiping Satan who's masquerading as a God in his place, in, in the place of the real God. And that's something that we see exploding in these days. For example, the whole idea of self-harm is referring to a person's harming their own body on purpose. This is something that has been really exploding here lately, and it's not just drugs and alcohol, but the idea that you might somehow find fulfillment in doing damage to your own body. Matter of fact, when you look at some of the psychology websites that talk about this and refer to it as a mental illness, some examples of self-harm include cutting yourself with a razor blade, knife, or other sharp object, punching yourself, punching things like a wall, burning yourself with cigarettes, matches, or candles, pulling out your own hair, poking objects through body openings, or breaking your bones or bruising yourself. And some of you may be thinking, are there folks that really do this kind of stuff? Oh, yes. And if you are engaging in those kind of activities... And the other kind of activities is just as dangerous where you check out of life by taking a pill, snorting cocaine, injecting something into your veins, anything to remove yourself from reality that ends up harming you. Have you seen the pictures of folks that get on meth or something else? And, and have you imagined that when they started that process, they looked in the mirror and said, I want to make myself ugly. I want to take away all my mental cap uh, capacities. I want to completely destroy my life. Did someone start out that way? No. Baal, or in this case, we'll just say Satan, just tricked them into trying this, trying that, move a little bit, one step at a time into this avenue of darkness, and it's all going to be okay. Come on, let's go. Well, see, these prophets of Baal are letting you in on one of Satan's strategies. If you find that self-harm is a part of your lifestyle right now, the chances are you're not worshiping the Lord who loves you and created you and wants you not to harm yourself, but to help yourself and to allow him to help you. So friends, we're already seeing how Satan works and it's exploding all around us. Don't fall into the trap because when you are worshiping Baal and hurting yourself to impress some imaginary God, you're just following Satan. Don't do it, my friends. Instead, don't waver between two opinions. If the Lord, he is God, then worship him first and foremost. We're going to show what happens when this God does show up on Mount Carmel tomorrow. Don't you miss it. Be here with us as we wake up in God's word and once again glorify the real Lord of the universe. God bless you.